Governor of Florida and Republican presidential candidate Ron DeSantis appeared on the Today Show for an interview with Dasha Burns on NBC and finally got fact-checked, finally got corrected about his dishonest point about abortion, late-term abortions. He didn't say in this interview, but he has said before, post-birth abortions, which is just not a thing. That's called murder, Ron. Uh, and says that Democrats want that. Sure, say whatever you want whenever you want it, I guess, is the new standard for some of these GOP candidates. And finally, Dasha Burns said, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to stop you there. We've seen in past interviews, they just let him say stuff like that. Not this time. Really good to see. Take a look. Recently, his biggest individual donor threatening to pull back his cash unless Governor DeSantis takes less extreme positions and shows he can win over moderates. A chief concern, the six-week abortion ban DeSantis signed in Florida. It's an issue Democrats have worked to use against him and other Republicans on the campaign trail. The governor has implied the issue should be left to individual states. So would you veto any sort of federal bill that tries to put a nationwide ban in place? So we will be a pro-life president and, and we will... Who's we? We won't be a pro-life president. You could say I will be support pro-life policies. Um, I would not allow uh, what a lot of the left wants to do, which is to override pro-life protections throughout the country, all the way up really until the moment of birth in some instances, which I think is, is infanticide. Uh, well, it is actually, not I got to push back on you on that because that that's a, a misrepresentation of, of what's happening. I mean, that 1.3 percent of abortions happen at 21 weeks or higher. There's no, no right. evidence of Democrats pushing for but, but their abortions view up is, until. Their view is is that all the way up into that, yet there should not be any legal protections. Uh, there is no in indication of Democrats right, pushing you're, you're for right. that. Well, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, no. Uh, why are you challenging me? That's not fair. All these other interviews that let me just say anything I wanted. Good job, Dasha Burns. I don't know why so many interviewers just let those talking points go because excuse me of course the only late-term abortions that happen the only ones are medically necessary abortions meaning the life of the mothers being threatened the fetus is no longer viable there is not a single example of and they've been looking for it of a woman who carries uh or is pregnant for nine months goes through all of that and then in the ninth month goes, ah, never mind. Nope. Healthy fetus, healthy me, but no. It just doesn't happen. And so they're arguing against this uh, mythical position so they don't have to answer for their actual position, which is a six-week abortion ban in the state of Florida. He wants to not talk about that because he knows it's unpopular in the country. And so he has to make it about, well, I'm just arguing against post-birth abortion and late-term abortion. Well, Post-birth abortion doesn't happen, and late-term abortions only happen when absolutely medically necessary, again, to protect the life of the mother, when the fetus is no longer viable. The only reason why Democrats are much more careful about the language of laws on this is because often when lawmakers craft bans, even when they're late-term related, they leave out the... Uh, say of medical experts so the complex set of variables that allow a medical expert to decide when it is necessary is left out of the conversation and the politician puts the language in there that doesn't take into consideration how complex these variables are and when exactly that judgment call is made it is complex and it's not just like a light turns on and says now there's a large enough threat, right? It, it's a call and a lot of things that we don't even understand if we're not all experts on these subjects and when you leave it up to Ron DeSantis to decide how you define it as medically necessary. Um, often things are left out and people are hurt because of it. And we've seen that with some of these bans already. And so that's why the Democratic Party position is just largely popular in the country. It's reasonable. It's moderate. It's kind of the standard that people adopted after Roe v. Wade largely and should be uncontroversial, but it obviously still is. Uh, and then here's this moment where he gets asked about Trump and the primary. DeSantis says some things, and then he finally sort of accepts and is willing to say in more stark terms than he has in a, lot, uh, a long time that Trump lost in 2020. 
If the election is a referendum on Joe Biden's policies and the failures that we've seen, and we are presenting a positive vision for the future, we will win the presidency uh, and we will have a chance to turn the country around. If, on the other hand, uh, the election is not about January 20th, 2025, but January 6th, 2021, or what document was left by the toilet at Mar-a-Lago, if it's a referendum on that, we are going to lose. But and that's Trump just the, the reality. Race, you know with Trump in the race, that is largely what it's going to be about. And right now, and you're not, not fighting that's against... Not, go, Dasha Burns. I love this interview. So that's, Biden, that's you're not, fighting against that's Trump. Not a, that's not a pathway for success for the Republican Party. I think a lot of our voters understand that. Yes or no, did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? Whoever puts their hand on the Bible on January 20th every four years... Uh, is the winner. Okay, but respectfully, you did not clearly answer that question. And if you can't give a yes or no because on whether or not Trump lost, then how of can Of course, no, of, of course he lost. Uh, Trump then why is that the first time you've said that? Trump lost the 2020 of, election. Of course, okay. uh, Joe Biden's the president. But the issue is, I think, what, what people in, in the media and elsewhere, they want to act like somehow this was just like the perfect... And he's going to say perfect election, but in the clip cuts off I, i've already addressed the talking point so many times obviously every election has flaws but actually this one was deemed to be after investigation after investigation audit after audit recount after recount one of the most secure we've had and definitely there was no outcome determinative election fraud uh but i want to address it just i actually wasn't planning on doing this in the segment but i've been jotting down uh for a segment i don't think we'll have time for today a bunch of Biden related policy items that I think ended up being really good. And I'd forgotten that he said this. So let's go through quickly and address this point. If the election is a referendum on Joe Biden's policies and the failures that we've seen, and we are presenting a positive vision for the future, we will win the. Pre so, of course, a Republican presidential candidate is going to say something like that, no matter what Biden does, because he wants to portray himself as the better option. So he's going to say everything Biden did was horrible. But what bothers me so much about that and about this current situation we're in with talking points like that is right, left and center politically. So many more people resonate way more than I feel is justified with that message. And so a lot of people, even on the left, I think are not at all acknowledging achievements when it comes to Biden's presidency, which also is a disservice to accuracy and the truth. So then I'm trying to balance the scale a little bit. And uh, just like how we should be honest about the failures of the Biden administration, such as his decision on the Willow Project and the negative ramifications of that, you also have to be honest about the achievements. And I think some people on the left, in the name of wanting the Democratic Party to be more progressive, which is good, and uh, wanting to push the Democratic Party further, also good, then end up, in the name of something good, doing something bad, which is almost dishonestly ignoring real steps forward and real achievements. And that is a disservice to accuracy and a disservice to hope for people. You want people to know that because of a lot of people doing a lot of work to get Joe Biden elected over Donald Trump, real progress has been made. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when I hear DeSantis say that and others say stuff like that, my response, I want kind of to respond with do you mean, as far as all these policy failures, the American Rescue Plan, trillions of dollars of relief and the economic downturn that the pandemic caused, millions of jobs created because of that based on an independent analysis, first major gun safety bill in decades, pulling out of America's longest war, largest investment in green energy in history, millions of green energy jobs will be created because of that, lowering prescription drug costs, including allowing Medicare to negotiate drug prices, capping the cost of insulin for Medicare recipients out of pocket at $35 per month, raising the minimum wage for federal government workers, Katanji Brown Jackson getting on the Supreme Court, PACT Act giving health care to veterans who were exposed to the toxic burn pits, the Chips and Science Act bringing more semiconductor manufacturing to America once in a generation, infrastructure law, rebuilding roads and bridges, increasing access to clean and reliable drinking water, repairing uh, airports, expanding broadband, investing in passenger rail, or are you saying the big failure is his economic record, unemployment back down to historic lows hitting the lowest it's been in 50 years inflation down to three percent and dropping and lower than other comparable economy economies other g7 countries real wages increasing 2.4 percent gdp growth is that the big failure you're talking about 
because compared to other presidencies historically, that's actually a pretty impressive record. Not that it's what we want it to be as progressive, but in the sake, um, or I should say in the interest of, for the sake of honesty, accuracy, and transparency, just like how we have to do with the failures, you also have to acknowledge real achievement. And I think if more people were doing that, maybe the perception of the Biden administration among the American electorate could be a little bit different, which we want it to be different. We want it to be better going into the 2024 presidential election against Donald Trump, and then also make sure people are aware of the flaws and bad decisions like the Willow Project and others. But uh, don't let your ambition to push the Democratic Party as you should want to do get in the way of an honest analysis of uh, any presidency, including Biden's. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to be a part of what makes this show possible, plus get access to the full video version of the show hours before all the clips are able to be uploaded to the YouTube channel, plus get the bonus show on the weekends, you can do so by going to LukeBeasleyShow.com slash membership. That's LukeBeasleyShow.com slash membership, and there's a link in the description.